Hey, what's up? Good morning. I'm back here at WeWork in my little telephone booth, as you can probably tell. And I wanted to um, make a quick follow up um, video of yesterday's vlog. Um, yesterday, Zoltan from Hungary asked how he should go about like moving, you know, he's currently a gaffer and moving over as a DP. And he said that he um, is currently, you know, in Vietnam where he uh, moved. But um, his, you know, work went quite down. He has only two gigs a month and he is, as he said, undercharging. So I wanted to kind of um, elaborate a little bit more on this on this point of this undercharging. So I think because what I said yesterday is, you know, double your price and so on. And I think in general, that's 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 right. But I want to go more in detail what the psychology is here. Why you should, you know, charge way more than you do currently. And but also you can't just charge. You need to, um, you know, you need to make sense for your clients why you charge more than your competition. I would always suggest that you charge more uh, than your competition. So let's break it down. So. So the way how pricing is being done is totally arbitrary, right? So for example, like you are starting cameraman and then you go out and see what other people uh, charge. Then you probably have some gear and you trying to figure out, you know, what would that gear cost if um, you would kind of rent it and then you built it in into your price. So this type of equation comes basically from your point of view. But then there is another point of view of pricing and that's from the client's or customer's perspective. For him, it's basically a value proposition. What is it worth to the client to get X, Y and Z? How does he benefit from your services and what is it worth to pay for him, right? So you need to put those two actually in your into your equation um, in order to come up with really with um, a pricing that makes sense and that you benefit from it because you don't undercharge because undercharging is really like it's a lose lose situation because you are frustrated. You can't pay properly your bills. Your clients will be pr uh, um, frustrated because you will do probably a lousy job because you have in the back of your mind, oh, he charges so little, he charges so little. So nobody's winning. And I think intuitively clients, even though they say they want the cheapest and blah, 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 but intuitively they usually want the best, especially when you work in a professional setting. So the main mistake that usually people do is that they come from the, the, the let's say the left side or the, the lower end of it. They ask basically, how much is my, my thing worth in, you know, my service worth in the marketplace? And then they try to kind of find their um, place in it. Um, I think a different approach helps you actually to get out of this red race and gets you out of underselling yourself. So what I would actually think of is how much money do you really want to make? And forget about, you know, your skill set and anything, right? How much money do you want to make? So let's say the market price is 350 bucks, but I want to do rather $2,000, right? Per day, um, if I'm a shooter, for example. So the question is, how do you get there? You need to basically ask yourself, how much money do you really want to make in order to create a good business and to live comfortably? And then reverse engineer from here, what do you need to bring to the table in order to make that money? So instead of going out and asking everyone, hey, how much do you charge and researching all of this, then people give you all the low ball numbers. Ask yourself, how much money do you want to make? And then go out and find that niche or that clientele that first of all can pay it. Second of all, you have to think about it what do you need to bring to the table in order to get that money? So the way how you should address that is you need to be aware or should, you know, get some clarity when you charge premium dollar, what kind of value can you add to your client that is infinitely greater than what he or she is paying you? So I give you an example. 
So I, I have basically two businesses. One is I produce, you know, commercials and I lend because, you know, I'm also a camera, a DP cameraman. Um, I lend those skills to either my competitors or to other production companies and so on. And the way how I structure basically my day rate is that I say, here is the amount of gear that I'm bringing to a shoot. First of all, I never let them decide what to buy for my package. I'm coming with my entire package because first of all, you can consistently charge more money. Second of all, you won't, will never run into the situation that you let your client decide, oh, should you bring the drone or not? Should you bring a Steadicam or not? Then you don't have the Steadicam because they didn't order it. Then you are on set and client asks, hey, do you have a Steadicam? You said, no, you didn't order it. And so there's already a conflict of interest. It's like, boom, right? Like a clash that you at all costs wanna, wanna avoid. So therefore package it all into your day rate. So therefore you can charge more. And then I break it down and say, here is my fee. And usually the between what I bring to the table in terms of gear and my fee is really kind of insignificant in comparison to what I bring to the table. Meaning to say, let's say the gear is worth $2,000 a day of rental. You know, charge $1,950. Then you can say, you pay basically just, you know, the rental fee of all the gear, like psychologically, and I come for free. Do you see what I'm doing here? I try to create a value proposition that the client cannot reject just by saying, oh, I want the cheapest because the cheapest in, in comparison to what? In term, you know, in comparison to someone who's just a starter and comes with a little dinky video camera. Well, even though he charges $350 as opposed to me, $1,950, I bring way more value to the table. Client knows it's automatically way more quality, at least in his perception. And therefore, I think it's a smart idea to marry those two together. The second thing is value proposition is not just about your gear, but it's also about your talent. Um, you need to find Jolton a, a framework where you can, where you in a certain sense can prove that what you bring to the table, you are the only one who can do this. So I give you an example. Yesterday I mentioned, you know, something like a travel magazine for an internet portal, right? So if you position yourself as the expert in travel magazine footage and films, well, why should someone, you know, why should a client then hire someone else who does not come from this type of specialty? So I think it's very important to specialize so that and um, better question, where would you go with a knee problem to a general doctor or to a knee specialist, right? Obviously. And it's the same here. Don't be the generalist specialize in something that you figure out that this is really a profitable for profitable niche where there is a lot of money turnaround also for your client so that they can pay your bill. So I think music videos are really a shitty business because they don't generate really money. So I wouldn't be in that. But if you say you specialize in in something travel related, something that generates money, a doctor, hospitals, all of that where big, big money is kind of handed from 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 one entity to another because you, you want to always frame your fee insignificant in the gain that they will gain. So for example, if you make a music video, well, the gain besides of that you hope that thousands of people view that, the monetarily the monetary gain for a band is usually insignificant. But for a hospital that wants to increase, let's say their bottom line 10, 20%, that means millions of dollars. And if you say, I charge $70,000 for this project, seems like a good deal, right? If you deliver on your promise. So long story short, I just wanted to reiterate, when you raise your prices, don't compare with, you know, with the other people who are on the bottom because they are, you know, just doing the stupid game. But you have to position yourself. You have to um, justify your cost in a very unique way. And only you can find that. I could give you only a few examples, you know, how I would do that and, and how I do it in, in my in my day to day operation. So I hope this will help you to get started and find your niche, start from your niche. Don't limit yourself. Don't think that you have to be forever in this little niche. 
once you are an expert in that very tiny niche that you dominate, that you are the best go-to person ever, then you will kind of branch out into other overlapping areas. So if you start becoming the, you know, my example with the travel portal, become that expert. So now you have probably an in with hotels or restaurants and so on, right? Because they're all overlapping kind of businesses um, similar to that. And if you can expand then on that, one day you will be able to make a Nike commercial. And that's the best way um, of growing. And I've seen many, many media companies grow this way. So if you like this type of stuff and you know you think that it's adding some value, I would be ever so grateful if you would uh, just subscribe here on the right side. Um, and if you want more stuff, maybe more in-depth stuff, because this is just like um, kind of the vlogosphere here. If you want more in-depth stuff, just go to entrefilmmaker.com, entre like an entrepreneur, E-N-T-R-E, filmmaker.com and over there there's a lot of um, in-depth stuff um, different type of shows and so on and um, yeah this is all just for you know helping you out because I was so generously taken in um, you know we can hear I have an accent and I'm obviously a foreigner and I was generously taken in here by the Americans and by you and by all the people that I meet and you know this is my way of kind of saying thank you and doing my share and uh, sharing all the ideas that I come across in order to make um, this business work. So head over to entrefilmmaker.com and I'll see you in my next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.